All right, today I want to talk about derivatives of logarithms. Last time we talked about just doing the log, like what the log means, why you want to use it for solving for variables inside the exponent. How about if you want to take the derivative of something involving a logarithm? You know, last time there wasn't really anything about calculus. We didn't talk about derivatives or anything. Let's do it this time. What is the derivative of the logarithm? Um, there's a formula for it, right? I want to try and give you some idea of, of why you should believe me when I tell you the formula. Um, let's say that I have, you know, one of these logarithm functions where let's just say I'm using some base here. It could be base 10, could be base 2, could be whatever, right? could be the natural log, which is base e. Let's say y equals the log base a of x. We can do a little trick here. We already know how to find the derivative of an exponential function. I hope you remember that. Derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x times ln of a. So um, remember, this logarithm is the same as saying, this means the same thing if you can rearrange it as this, a to the power y equals x, right? Remember log base a of x means a to what power equals x? Well, if that is equal to y, then a to the power y equals x. And here, we can take the derivative on both sides. The right-hand side will become one, right? Because the derivative of x is one. What about the left-hand side? The derivative of a to the power y is a to the power y ln of a. I'll leave a little space here a to the power y, ln of a. Now, it's not an x up here. That's a little weird. I'm taking, like over here, I took the derivative using x as the variable. Here, I took the derivative using y as the variable. What you do in that case, if you don't have just the x up here, you gotta do the chain rule. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which I'll write as y prime, or you could write dy over dx, all right? This is a little weird what I just did. Actually, this is there's a name for this it's called implicit differentiation, which is a, a big topic that um, we're not really going to get into in this class. If you're interested in that, take the continuation applied calculus two, math one one two two. Uh, anyway, would you would you uh, allow me to do this? We're we're just about done here. You can solve for y prime, which is derivative. So y prime is one over a to the y ln of a. And one last thing, a to the y is a little weird to have in your answer. I wanted my answer using x's because I want a derivative of log base a of x. But a to the y is x, isn't it? So this is the same as 1 over x ln a. And this is the derivative of the log base a of x. I'm going to write that again in a nice little box. This is the rule, the derivative of log base a of x is 1 over x times the natural log of a. And there is a special rule if this is actually the natural log. What would that look like? The derivative of ln of x. This actually becomes a little nicer. It's going to say 1 over x times the natural log of what the base of this log is. But remember, the, what the natural log means is the log with base e. So this will say 1 over x ln e. And I hope you remember from last time, uh, two times ago, last time, ln of e is 1, whatever time we did it. This part is going to go away when you use the natural log. Uh, so what you get here is the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. It is a general theme in calculus that the natural log uh, is more well behaved than the other logs, just like the exponential function with base e is a little nicer than the other exponential functions. Anyway. These are formulas worth memorizing. Let's just do a bunch of examples taking derivatives of logarithms. All right, there they are in the box. Let's do some examples. How about, so this is a very simple one, derivative log base seven of x. All right, for that, we're just gonna use the first one here where the a is seven, that's all there is to it. I just plug in over here where the a is seven, one over x times the natural log of seven. And as usual, this ln seven is just some number you can do on your calculator if you, uh, if you really wanna know the answer as a decimal. Okay, these really only become interesting when there are uh, when there's other stuff going on. You know, I'm not gonna ask you to do a bunch where you just plug into the formula. That's not very interesting. Too easy, here's, uh, here's another, how about the derivative of log base 
5 of 3x. What do you say? Now, this time around, we have some extra stuff on the inside. What do you got to do when you have extra stuff on the inside? You do the chain rule. So this is the one where you think about the outside function and the inside. In this case, the outside is log base 5. The inside is 3x. And so I'm going to take the derivative of the outer part, which makes 1 over, so looking at this formula here, but the a is 5, and the, instead of the x, I have 3x. So I go 1 over 3x ln 5, all right? That was the derivative of the outside part, the log with base 5. And then the chain rule says you do the derivative of the outside with the same thing on the inside, the same thing being the 3x, and then times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of 3x? It is 3. There you go. If you like, you could simplify this 3 and this 3 will uh, will cancel. I don't really care about that. It's just 1 over x ln 5. Whatever. How about this one? Derivative of natural log of x squared plus 2x. What do you think? Here you got to do the chain rule again. I got this thing on the outside, which is the ln. This thing on the inside, which is that thing, x squared plus 2x. What do we do? We do the derivative of the outer part first. So the derivative of ln x, I'm going to use this formula here. Plugging in instead of x, I have x squared plus 2x. So I get as my answer 1 over x, but it's not x, it's that stuff, x squared plus 2x, right? And then this is the derivative of the outside part, the ln part. And then the chain rule says multiply times the derivative of the inside. What we get, we get the derivative of the inside is uh, 2x plus 2, right? That's the derivative of x squared plus 2x. One more, I think I can squeeze in here. How about derivative of x times ln of x? What do you gotta do for this one? Is this another chain rule? Chain rule is what you do when you have one thing stuck inside of another thing. Actually, that's not what this is. There's nothing, I mean, there's nothing other than x stuck inside the natural log. What is going on here? There is a product, that multiplication there. What rule you do you use? For a product, the answer is the product rule. Uh, remember, it is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. So I go the first thing, which is x, times derivative of the second thing. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x plus the second thing, ln x, times derivative of the first thing. Derivative of x is 1. There you go. This is the derivative of x times ln x. This x times 1 over x is the same as 1, right? If you wanted to simplify, this uh, is the same as 1 plus ln x. Okay. One interesting thing to notice about the derivative of a log. Check this out. The derivative of, obviously, ln x is 1 over x. That's the, uh, the formula there. What if I want to do the derivative of ln of negative x? What would happen here? Well, for this, we would use the chain rule, right? That means you do the derivative of the outside first. So uh, first of all, I'm going to get 1 over x, but not x. It's, one, it's negative x in this case. I'm plugging in negative x to this formula. So I get 1 over negative x, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is minus x. The derivative of minus x is minus 1. And so this, you can simplify and get 1 over x, right? So interesting fact, derivative of ln x is the same as derivative of ln of minus x, isn't it? Because you get 1 over x here and 1 over x here. So when you are taking the derivative, it does not matter inside of a log if it's positive or negative. This is not just true of the natural log. It's true of all logarithms. What that means is, I'm going to write it in this way. It means this, the derivative of the log of the absolute value of x equals 1 over x. So this is the same as this formula here, only I put absolute values in there. That's because what I just said was, it doesn't matter when you're taking the derivative of the log of something, it doesn't matter if that thing is positive or negative, you get the same answer either way, which means I can put the absolute values in there and it will not change the answer, all right? Um, why would you ever encounter log of absolute value? That's, that's pretty weird. Actually, this comes up a lot. Um, so that's why this may seem weird. And if you think this is weird, I agree with you. It does seem weird. But it turns out, you'll have to take my word for it for now, 
the log of the absolute value of something is actually something that we're going to encounter fairly often. This is not just true of the natural log. What I said before will, will also work for uh, any other log. So the derivative of the log base A of absolute value X is also 1 over X. So the moral of this story here is when doing derivative... When doing the derivative of a log of something, you may ignore absolute values inside the logarithm. They just don't matter at all. They go away. They don't even appear in the answer. It's not like one over uh, absolute value x here. No, it's just one over x. All right. Uh, so for example, derivative of log of absolute value x squared minus three x plus five what you gonna get, all right? First of all, I said log, but I didn't write any little base. Remember, if if you just see log with no base written, it means base 10. That's called the common logarithm. If you, know, if you don't see any indication of what the base is, the default is 10. Okay, what is the derivative of this? So I'm going to have to use the chain rule because I have a complicated thing inside of the log, but overall I use this rule, right? It is the log base 10. And so I go, uh, the derivative of the log part is gonna be one over x ln of a. Instead of x, I'm using all of that, but I am ignoring the absolute value signs. So I just get this, x squared minus three x plus five. And then I wanna see ln of a. What's the a in this case? It's 10, right? If you don't see any base written, you assume 10. So this is ln of 10, all right? That much was the derivative of the log base 10 part. And then the chain rule says, multiply times derivative of the inside. So times derivative of the inside will be two X minus three, right? Two X minus three. That's how we do it.